Hey guys, today I want to speak to you about why you should not be buying a house. Usually I'm a big advocate for owning a home. And if you turn the TV on, daytime TV, all the shows on TV are about property. Homes under the hammer, escape to the country, a place in the sun. All these shows essentially sell this dream that owning a home is what you need to be doing. And don't get me wrong, owning a home is great. And if you, can't own a, if you can own a home, fantastic. However, today, if you look at the climate where we're in right now, with the interest rates rising, with super astronomical amounts of debt that so many people are taking on, owning a home has become effectively a form of a trap for a lot of people. I read a really disturbing statistic today that said that one in six people who have bought property at those crazy astronomical prices and taking on so much debt, one in six of those people will never, ever be able to repay their mortgages by the time they come to retire. That should really make us pause for a moment and ask ourselves a big question. Do I really want to own a home? And of course there are pros and cons of that. Or do I want to consider a slightly different alternative? If you're really enjoying today's video, I'd appreciate you doing just one thing for me. Really, really appreciate it. Please, please hit that subscribe button. 51.8% of people who watch our channel, who love our content, just haven't gotten around. They even think they've subscribed, but they haven't subscribed. If you're one of those people, if you enjoy our content, if it empowers you and gives you information, inspiration, education, obviously, please hit that subscribe button. And whilst you're there, hit the like button if you're enjoying today's video. Let's jump straight in. And we're gonna keep it super real with today's video. I've made some notes here on my notepad to guide me as I go along. And do make sure you hang around because all these points are gonna hit home, okay? Now, as I said before, home ownership, obviously, there's a direct link, particularly in this country, between home ownership and wealth over time, over time, yeah? Because property prices historically, have, you know, have tended to go up, okay? Now, what are the reasons why you should not buy a house? The very first reason, I would say, number one is because you cannot afford to own your own home. Let me just el elaborate. I'm gonna use an example. Let's say that you are someone who earns 3K a month, right? This is your income, this is what hits your bank account. And I just looked, I just Googled on my phone, what's the average? mortgage payment that people are making right now. Average, right? And if you live in a city, anywhere near a major city, you're probably paying north of a thousand pounds. And that's just your mortgage. Mortgage. A thousand. So already a third of that income has gone towards mortgages. Yeah? And then on top of that, you've got other things to pay for. You've got your food, Let's say that you spend 150 pounds a week. So 600 pounds will go towards food. Then you've got other things. You've got your council tax, you've got all those other things. And before you know it, come near the end of the month, you might have maybe at best 200 pounds left after paying for various things, including many things that you did not expect that will show up, okay? And it doesn't, it doesn't actually stop there because that number there, that mortgage number, then has a lot of uncertainty around it because that number keeps changing as interest rates change. And with about 1.4 million people expected to come out of their fixed rates, it means a lot of people will be panicking right now. And in fact, if you're one of those people, react in the comments and tell us how you feel relating to this point. So this number keeps changing in many ways. So my point is, and there is something else we haven't even factored in, which will lead me to point two in a minute, is if you can't afford to buy a house, don't feel led into buying a house because it's not the only game in town. It's not the only party in town owning a home. Even though it's great to own a home, if you truly can't afford it, don't buy a house. Aim for around 25% of your net income to be your mortgage payment, around that because then that leaves room for many other things, which brings me to point number two. Don't buy a house 
because you might not have factored in ongoing maintenance. I'm a homeowner. I've been a homeowner for over a decade. I know, I have full experience. We live in a 1930s house. Yes, it's a lovely home, it's beautiful and all those things. But it also comes with a lot of problems. For example, I remember very clearly during winter in December, super cold, super high energy prices. What happens? The boiler breaks down. The guy shows up. Not only do I have to pay for his fees to fix it, because he's obviously a professional doing his job, I also now need to buy a new boiler because the thing has just given its life up. If you are renting, you just make a phone call. That's not your problem. That's this guy's problem or this woman's problem. You just phone them to come and sort it out. If your washing machine stops working, if you own a home, you have to pay for it. If your dishwasher, if you're lucky enough to have one, stops working, you have to fix it. If you have degradation in your home, you have to do it. If your garden's ever grown, you have to mow it. Basically, if anything goes wrong, it's on you, okay? For example, the other, uh, last summer, we had the hottest day of the year, and we had a thing where, near where I live, there were like wildfires. If that house, if our, ha if our house had caught fire, it would be on me. So it meant that we had to have insurance to make sure that our house would be rebuilt if something bad happened. So essentially, when you own a home, there are all these unforeseen things. You know how I did this thing here? What you hadn't even factored in is then those unforeseen things. So a lot of people, they're like, I want to buy a house. They're like, yeah, they're so obsessed about like, oh, can I, afford, can I, can I pay that amount? You ain't even seen nothing. Because there's so many things that will show up that you did not expect. And you have to pick up the tab for all those things. So point number two is ongoing maintenance. Oh, and I'd even mentioned service charges for those of you who buy a flat. And then the uncontrollable service charges that come with owning a flat. Okay, that's point number two. Point three is you don't have a deposit. Okay. I know this sounds obvious, but I'm making this point for a reason. Let's say, for example, that a property costs 500K, yeah? And you're like, yeah, okay, I can put down 10% deposit. That's 50 grand that you have to go and find somewhere, 50K. And 10% is actually quite a small percentage to put down. But that amount is so much for people to save up to the point where there are now 100% mortgages that don't even require you to have a guarantor. We've made a video about it. I'll link to it below and above. Go and check it out. I share the pros and cons. But the reason I mention this is you, out of that you know, eagerness and FOMA-driven desperation to own a home, then find a way eventually to own a home. And then what happens? You take on a phenomenal amount of debt tied to that purchase. Then obviously there are people who decide to take on 100% mortgages and I get it, you know, if you choose to do that, that's, you know, that's, that's completely fine. It's your personal choice. But that then has many other consequences related to affordability, yeah? And you have to ask yourself, and with every one of those purchases, you've got stamp duty, you've got all those other costs that you will never ever get back. That's right. There are other participants in the marketplace who are making serious buck as a result of you getting onto the property ladder. From the banks who want to give you 100% mortgages to solicitors, basically everyone. Everyone's involved. Um, people who are doing surveying, anybody. Everybody. The tax man, everybody is getting a piece of your money because you want to own your own home. Nothing wrong with that, by the way. But sometimes the obvious needs to be spelt out from people who've actually been there and can tell you their reality. Number four reason for not owning a home is you want flexibility or location independence. Let me give you some real realities here, yeah? Let's say, for example, that you're moving somewhere. You bought that home, you're like, yeah, man, woo, my dream house, I've moved in. And then you have a nightmare neighbor next door. What do you do? Can you just up and go? and just go, yeah, man, I'll pack my things up and, and move out next door. No, you can't. A lot of people can't even sell their properties right now. They're stuck, which means they're also stuck with those nightmare neighbors. But if you're renting, you can't up and go. I gave you the example of my barber shop last, uh, barber last week. Prices have gone up. He was paying a grand, a grand in Kent, a grand per month for a flat. 
Now it's gone up to like 1,800 in less than three years. <laughs> Man, that's insane. Yeah, but guess what? He has flexibility. He can get up and go, and he is going to be moving somewhere else and driving now. See, that flexibility matters a lot. There's a lot of value that you get with being flexible, being able to do whatever you want, wherever you want. You might even be somebody who's chasing opportunities. You're like, you know what? I might want to move jobs. I might want an international role. I might want to move out of the UK and so on. But you want that location independence. Or you might be someone who's working from home and you want to live out in the sticks and work online, okay? Having your own home in a specific location doesn't give you that flex flexibility. In fact, it holds you back, okay? And I wanna be real about that because that's the truth, that's the reality. That's really what happens. So there is definitely value in having flexibility or having that location independence. You might be someone who says, I wanna travel the world, yeah? Of course, renting will be the better alternative. You pitch your tent, when you're done, you move on. That is a big advantage for people who are renting. Then the final point, and I've got a bonus one by the way, I wanted to make is, you should not be buying a house, in my personal opinion, feel free to ignore, if you are not ready to settle down. I'll give you my reasons, yeah? And this is not like, I'm speaking to people who, who are dating, who are, or who are single or whatever right now. And of course there are people who want to be single forever. They're like, I don't want a partner, I want to be single and that's it. What that means, with being single, is that you take on all the burden. Everything's on you, right? Whereas I know from personal experience, I'm not saying you have to go and find a partner. It could be someone you share costs with, it could be a roommate or whatever. But I know from having somebody else who carries the weight with you, weight with you, that it's a lot easier to own a home if there are two people involved. Because you can share the costs. You can share all the burdens that come with owning a home. And of course, there's then the possibility of dual income, which gives you a much bigger advantage, okay? But the trap that comes with two people buying a home is that two people go, oh, we've got this much income. Look how big our income is. Let's go and buy the biggest possible house we can buy. And of course, that becomes a whole different trap, okay? Then the final bonus point is, don't buy a house if you are trying to get rich. Yeah, because yeah, okay, obviously property prices go up over time and that kind of stuff, but I really think that that would be the wrong decision when it comes to buying a house, if you're doing it just for wealth. Okay, if you're buying an investment property with a business case, with numbers that stack up, then yeah, great. You've done your maths, it makes sense. But buying a house as a way to get rich as a bonus point is actually the wrong thing to do because like, by the time you've added up all the costs that come into it, as well as like the fact that the house is, isn't even generating an income, unless of course you're somebody who then starts to rent out rooms and that kind of stuff. Generally speaking, it's not the wisest thing to do to buy a house if you are trying to get rich as a residential property, yeah. Although obviously over time, it stands to go up in value and all those things and gives you stability and so on. I wanna hear from you guys in the comments. What do you guys think about what I shared on today's video? On reasons why you should not buy a house. Are you entirely pro for buying a house? Or are you, do you see almost the, the, the reality around the, there are other alternatives that you could actually rent? And for some people, not for everyone obviously, for some people, it might be a better option when it comes to their dwelling and their home and that kind of stuff. Jump in the comments and react. Just give me your thoughts on today's video more generally. If you really enjoyed today's video, I'd really appreciate it. Like I said before, if you hit that subscribe button, show some love and help our channel grow to reach a lot more people with our work. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. And as always, in all things, be thankful and seek joy. Take care, bye for now.